morning. It's good to see you this morning. We're glad you've chosen to come worship with us. And uh, this is a special day. We have special days all through the month of May. But we're starting off with Senior Adult Sunday. And we asked our Senior Adult Choir to combine with our Sanctuary Choir. And don't they look good up there? But we're glad you're going to worship with us, and it's going to be a day where we're just going to do some of the oldie goodies. Are y'all okay with that? And so we're glad you're here worshiping with us, and just encourage you to let the Lord just spill over you and listen to his message to you today. We're going to open up, they're going to open up with arrangement that the Hoppers made famous of shouting time in heaven. Good morning. Good morning. I survived camp. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we, uh, if you see all the blue shirts down front, uh, they all tried out for the senior adult choir. They didn't make it. And so uh, they, uh, they're wearing their camp shirts. This is our first time in two years. We've missed two years uh, getting to go to camp at Cook Springs, which is always special. We had a wonderful turnout. There's some people I want to recognize uh, this morning very quickly during our time of announcements. First of all, uh, not all of our students go to Shelby County. Uh, most of them do, though. And our baseball team just got through the second round of the playoffs, and they're heading to the third round. And uh, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we have several of those students that are actually part of our student ministry. I'm going to ask them to stand real quick, and you'll see who they are. Y'all stand up, you blonde-headed boys. Look at this. Go ahead. We got a couple more that didn't go to camp, so they were ashamed to be here. But uh, we want to support them. And uh, just to let you know, as parents, I've already spoken with principals of the middle school and the high school. They're going to have an excused absence Friday if they would like to go and see the game. They can check out after 1130, be here by 12 o'clock. We're going to take both of our church buses. We'll fill them with as many kids that would like to go down to Headland. And so it won't cost them anything. We'll cover the gas. They'll just need to get their ticket to go into the game. And so if you have a student that would like to go, they are more than welcome to come and go with us. And they don't have to be part of our student ministry, but we want to provide that service. I think the school's working on having some buses maybe too. We want to make sure that we can get kids down there that want to go. Uh, a few announcements that need to be made. 
First of all, we have a ladies' luncheon in a couple of Sundays from now. They're actually selling tickets this morning, so I want to make sure you knew about it. They're going to have a time of worship and Bible study on Saturday, May the 14th. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Tickets are $15, and you can purchase them out here after the service. And then also, our students uh, have decided to do something for their moms next Sunday. And so I know how it goes. These note cards I send home with announcements never make it to you. So I'm going to tell you this morning. Our students are cooking breakfast for their mothers for next Sunday. We'll eat breakfast in the fellowship hall at 9 o'clock. We'll be done by 9.30 next week so that you can make it to your Sunday school classes. But we want to invite our moms and husbands. You can come with them, but this is for them, so don't get your wrong ideas. That'll be next Sunday as we celebrate Mother's Day together. So as far as announcements, that's it. Let's close with this part of the service with a word of prayer, and we'll keep moving forward. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a wonderful weekend that we can come together and celebrate as a church. On Senior Adult Day, to have our student ministry sitting down front is awesome, Father. We thank you for the things we learned at our camp this weekend. We thank you for the, the victories we, we enjoyed this past week. And, Father, we just pray that you'll walk with us into this next week. Prepare us this morning. Father, as we get the opportunity and the privilege to worship together, prepare hearts for what you have in store for us, Lord. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue worship together, will you stand with us and join us on the hymn, Victory in Jesus.
Father, we thank you for the victory that you give each one of us. Father, the greatest victory over death, the victory we look forward to as we get to join you in heaven. But sometimes, Father, we overlook the victory that you want us to have every single day. Father, as we celebrate our senior adults today, how, could, how, how, how much could they testify to how you want to give us that victory? Father, they've walked down roads, and, and Father, you've given them a living testimony that we need to be listening to as it guides us along the way and as it teaches us how to continue to serve you and to further your kingdom. So this morning, Father, we just pray that you'll open our ears to the testimonies, that you'll open our ears, Father, to, to those around us that are telling us to continue on, to continue working, because there's always hope, there's always victory over the things that are happening in your life. And Father, may we truly live like we'd rather have Jesus every day of our lives. We ask all these things in the name of the, 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 the person who loved us more than anybody in this world, Jesus Christ. Amen.
God's people said, amen. amen. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that, uh, that I'm thankful for, and one of the things that we strive for in our church family, is to have equally strong ministries across the board, across the different age groups of our church. Are y'all hearing me okay? Sounds a little echoey up here. But um, <clears throat> I think that um, our preschool and children's ministry, for example, Connor's doing a great job with them. We're going to be highlighting our children in preschool next Sunday on Mother's Day with the baby dedication and the following Sunday with our annual children's musical. And then this morning, uh, we see all of these young people down front. Just got back from camp over in Cook Springs. Had a wonderful spiritual retreat. They're looking good, looking fresh. Some of the adults are nodding off a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, Andy is, continues to do a phenomenal job with our, our student ministry, and of course we'll be highlighting them also in the next uh, two or three weeks with our graduate recognition day coming up later in the month. Um, and then we have our senior adult ministry. Uh, Charles does a, a wonderful job with them. They just got back from a, a trip to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Had great fellowship together. God's doing great things with our seniors. And I'm so thankful that uh, we could recognize our senior adult ministry this morning. It's important to the life of our church. And I know that your prayers go with them. And, uh, I, and I'm so grateful. We have three individuals who... Uh, uh, you know, they, I think they would all claim to be seniors. They're, they're senior adults now, right? And uh, Tom Moore and Glenda Howell <clears throat> and Gary Ray are going to come and share a testi their testimonies this morning in that order. And I know that they have some good things to share with us, and we're so thankful for them and, and all of our seniors. So let's recognize, let's, uh, let's uh, let them know of our love and prayers for them as they come this morning. <clears throat> In thinking about this this morning, I, I wondered if I was to entitle my testimony, what would I call it? And it came to me so very quickly. The benefits of Sunday school. I co-teach a uh, Sunday school class with Jim Todd right back here. And Jim makes this comment several times on occasion to, to show how long he's been in church. And he says, listen, I was attending church nine months before I was born. <laughs> and I can relate to that because I, too, can't remember a time that I wasn't in church. My daddy would carry me to church and and thanks to two godly women, Mrs. Pope and Mrs. Patterson, they introduced me to Jesus Christ in Sunday school. And to this day, I still thank God for Mrs. Pope and Mrs. Patterson. I accepted Christ at the age of 13. It was a small church, uh, Disciples of Christ, sometimes a Christian church, not to be confused with the Church of Christ, that's a whole different animal. But we had a, a baptismal pool, if you will, very similar to what we have here. And there were steps that leading down into it. And I it was my Sunday, and I was going to be baptized. And just like here, you know, the candidates for baptism kind of have a, a robe on. Well, I was standing there, and I started down the steps. And the robe had a tendency to cling to me, and I got tangled up in the robe Y'all can already see what's coming, right? <laughs> and I began to stumble, and fortunately, the minister, Kent Dale, I'll never forget his name, 
reached out, grabbed me, kind of steadied me, and I went on down and was baptized. But I almost did a swan dive into that <laughs> baptismal pool and, and baptized myself. <laughs> I left that little church uh, some years later after I got married and moved to Memphis, Tennessee. This church that we joined, my wife and myself, in Memphis was rather unique. It was next door to Graceland, Elvis Presley's home. You had Graceland sat here, and our church was right next door. And all that separated it was about a five-foot stone wall. Elvis's wife, what was her name, the wife's name? Priscilla would come on occasion, you know, on occasion and worship there. We never saw Elvis there worshiping, but we did see Elvis a lot, and here's the reason why. Elvis could not gain entrance into his own property at the front gate of Graceland because of the fans. I mean, they just blocked. So Elvis would turn and drive up our church driveway into our parking lot, circle around back of our church to the rear of Graceland, and come in the rear entrance. And so we would see Elvis periodically driving through our church property. The fans got to be so great and the fans would come over to our church on occasion and say, now we know this is Elvis's church and we want to see the tunnel that leads from his house over to his church. And we would tell them, well, first of all, this is not Elvis's church. And secondly, there is no tunnel. Well, I know there is a tunnel too. I've been told there is, and I want to see it. Some of the fans got so irate, this is true, that our church staff would say, I'm sorry, but the tunnel is closed today. <laughs> and, and the people, they would buy that, you know. Now, why do I go on about that church in Memphis? I don't know your circumstances and, and when you may have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but I would imagine if you did so as a child or possibly a teenager, you probably found like myself that you really didn't start growing with God and following him until later in life. I found that to be true in my case. At this little church in Memphis, Tennessee, I for the first time was asked to teach Sunday school. And little did I know at that time the significance that Sunday school would play in my life. Because God has taken Sunday school and teaching Sunday school to grow Tom Moore to a point where I maybe would reach where he would like to see me go. In our married life, my wife and myself lived in five different states, six different cities, and in each one of those cities, we found a church home. We would look for the church home where we really felt that God was calling us and wanting us to serve him. Wasn't always a Baptist church. Was most of the time, but not all the time. And we would join that church and we would serve him there. And I thank God to this day that in every one of those churches, 
Tom Moore was asked to teach Sunday school. And God continued, continued, continued in my life to use that as a means of growing me. In 2007, we visited First Baptist Church of Columbiana. We had moved to Columbiana from Atlanta, and that was a culture shock in itself. Uh, my wife used to tell people, like, oh, we love our town. It's just like living in Mayberry. <laughs> but we joined here, and we decided that this is where God wanted us to serve. Well, how can you know that? I'll tell you how. I was still clearing land on the house that we were to build. We hadn't even moved in yet. And Beverly Justice came up on that hill to invite me and my wife to come to First Baptist Church. I then learned that my future next-door neighbor, Homer Joyner was a member here, and Homer talked to me about coming to this church. And so we joined. We joined on Sunday. That afternoon, about two, two and a half hours later, Mary Jean Denny and Robert Denny showed up at our door, knocked, and had cookies for us and wanted to thank us that we had come to visit their church. The next day, I got a phone call from the church. I got a letter from the church. On Tuesday night, two men stopped by to share the gospel with my wife and myself to make sure that we were saved. That's the reason I joined this church. God wanted me here. We were members here for about a year and a half, and guess what happened? I was asked to teach Sunday school <laughs> again. I was going to co-teach with Leela Natchison I've been teaching Sunday school here ever since. And God has continued to use that to grow Tom Moore. I can truthfully say there is not another thing I do throughout the day more important than my Bible study. Nothing. Nothing. Now this guy right back here, He's an excellent, excellent Sunday school teacher. And I ain't bad myself. <laughs> if you're here this morning and you're not in Sunday school, you're missing a blessing. We would invite you to our Sunday school class. Love to have you. It's Sunday school. Thank you. That was awesome, Tom. I love people that have those stories, don't you? So many of them do. Well, Charles and I usually are talking about things, you know, since we've worked together, what's going on, what's coming up musically. So uh, a little while back, he said, Glenda, we're going to be having Senior Day on Sunday, May, whatever today is. And I said, oh, that's great. He said, and we're going to have a couple of our seniors to speak. And I said, oh, that'll be wonderful, Charles. And there was a little pause, and he said, would you be one of our speakers? <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, it's mind over matter here. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. I will be 70 this year, so I am a senior, y'all. 
and I'm excited to be a senior. It's wonderful. And of course, Charles always has a plan. And I said, Charles, uh, he asked me if I'd give my testimony. Well, you know, when you've lived nearly 70 years and you got saved at 12, you got a lot you could share. I said, Charles, is this headed in any particular direction? And he said, you know, I think it'd be really, really good if you shared how you maintain your joy all through the years into your senior years. Well, Lord, that's easy for me because God has just given me such joy all of my life. Has my life been perfect? No. Have I made mistakes? Yes. Have I had heartaches and heartbreaks and disappointments and suffered losses? Yes. But joy is something we can choose. And we must choose it because joy is not a respecter of persons. Joy doesn't just come to me and skip over you. All of us were taught. We were taught at home, at school, at church, or any of those combinations. And in turn, we taught others, didn't we? All of us did. We've taught our children, other people's children, co-workers, dogs, cats, and even husbands. So yes, yes, we've all been teaching all of these years. Some of us have even gone to college uh, or vocational schools for special skills, and others we've had on the job training, like homemakers who are 24 seven workers. Why, why did we do those things? Because we wanted to learn how to become the person that we wanted to be and do the things that we wanted to do. So as I was thinking about joy this last week or two, I thought, you know, one day the Lord just really, as I was thinking about, Lord, what am I going to say? And as I, I don't even know how it came up, but the thought learned behavior came to my mind. Learned behavior. Now we hear that term in our society all the time, don't we? Learned behavior. It's things that over a progression of time, a pat, an interval of time, we have learned to behave in such a manner. And I thought, well, God created us. He created us first to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord and to love God and to serve him and to serve others. So after we have received Jesus Christ in our life, then the power of the Holy Spirit begins to work in our life, and that's the way it's been with me. I've, I've transitioned all through these years in my relationship with God. I've grown up, I'm like Tom, made a profession of faith as a youngster and drifted a little during my teenage years and then right back on course. And like Tom, never been out of church, never been away from God. And I'm so humbled by that, that his hand has kept me and all of our young folks here sitting in these three rows, you will encounter difficulty in life because all of us can tell you that. At your age, probably not so much. Some of you may have. But down through the days and the years ahead of you, if you will hold on to God, walk in his word, in obedience to his word. And there are many voices today telling us this word is no longer really applicable to our lives. It no longer relates because, you know, it might offend someone. Well, the Bible tells us if we're going to be God's children, we're going to love him and obey his word. So let's get back to joy. Okay, so if you were going out to the store, if you were going to buy milk and bread, you wouldn't go and buy a bottle of Clorox and some soap, would you? No, you'd go get just what you need. So as I began thinking about joy, I thought, I have to go after joy, just like the other fruits of the Spirit that I'm supposed to be producing, producing in my spiritual tree. So I have to make a point. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Psalm 1611 says, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Galatians 522 reminds us it's a fruit of the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 516, as we studied in Sunday school this morning, says to give thanks in everything. You might not be able to be thankful for 
that circumstance you're in or that situation you're having to endure, but you can still give thanks in that situation. Find something to be thankful for. Proverbs 17, 17, 22 says, A joyful heart does good like a medicine. Now, you know if you're sick and you take off to that doctor's office and they give you some medicine and they say, Now, here, you take this three times a day. You know what? That's a good prescription for us if we really want joy, isn't it? To take these scriptures that fill us with joy and, and just build us up in the Lord. Psalm 100, verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with joy, with gladness. Psalm 47, 40, I mean, excuse me, Psalm 4, 7 says, God, you have put gladness in my heart. I don't know if you were able to get it. Summer was going to try to add a picture. Do you have, there you go. This is my example of joy. My dad will be 98 the 4th, the 4th of July. And dad has, and I'm gonna, I just wrote the list because I didn't want to wander around. He has buried two wives. One has gone to the nursing home. So dad has lived alone the past three years, at the first time in his life. He had colon surgery about 12 years ago that was supposed to be laparoscopic and ended up, when he woke up, he had the whole staple deal. And the only way that we could comfort dad was by quoting scripture, reciting scripture to dad that we had learned years ago in Sunday school, in VBS, in children's Bible camp. I don't know if you remember Miss Elsie and Miss, Miss um, Bess Robinson, but they came to our schools and taught us Bible stories in school and did a beautiful flannel graph telling of the story. And if you learned enough Bible verses, 500 to be exact, you got to go to Bible camp. So I went to Bible camp. So in that time when Dad was in need, we were able to just quote scripture to him and pray that scripture over him. Then a couple of years ago, about three years ago, Dad suffered a brain bleed. I don't know if you know what a brain bleed is, but it's much like a stroke. So dad was at UAB for a while, and then he had to go to rehab, and he stayed in a nursing home for a while. And dad fully recovered from that, but maintained that attitude of joy and gratitude. He repassed his driving test so that he could re begin to drive again. So right now, at the age of 97, my dad can no longer shell a pea. He can't open a little pack of those cellophane crackers, but he can reach down and pull a whole handful of peas off that pea vine and take them to someone who can shell them. My dad has the greatest attitude as a Christian, even with little crippled hands with arthritis, wife in a nursing home, torn meniscus in his knee, but he still finds joy every day in the Lord. And if you call him right now, if I called Dad this morning and I said, Hey, Dad, good morning. How are you doing? He'd say, I am blessed by the best. And that's my example to remind me that I can always find joy in the midst of anything going on in my life because joy is in Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Glenda. I'm a little slower than Glenda. Usually in the evenings, I'll go to my study, sit down in an easy chair, and I'll try to comprehend what's happened during the day. A couple of weeks ago, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm thinking, what's happened during this day? And and all of a sudden it occurred to me, well, for one thing, Gary, somebody asked you to give a testimony on Senior Adult Day. And I'm sitting there going, how did this happen? <laughs> so I took out my phone, feeling pretty sad, started to have a pity party. <laughs> I Googled, because that's what we do today, right? I googled senior adult. Don't do that. <laughs> 
two words came up, old age. <laughs> Should have stopped there and cut my phone off, but I didn't. Right under it, it said, also see, senility. <laughs> so here I am, I've arrived. It's official. I'm a senior adult. I'm old. Then I turned to the fifth chapter of Genesis, and I was reminded that Humanity, as we know it, has an ending point. Methuselah lived 969 years. And then the Bible makes it clear. He died. Are you encouraged yet, senior adults? <laughs> no. You know, as I'm out and about in the community, and I, I'm always trying to, you know, I, I try to be cheerful like, uh, like Glenda, and, and uh, usually if you encounter me, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm happy-go-lucky, and I might say, man, what's your day like today? What's God doing in your life? And I get responses like, uh, well, I woke up this morning. <laughs> yeah. Some people might say, I'm on this side of the dirt. Others might say, and there's a variety of things, others might say, well, you know, I guess if you consider the alternative, I'm doing okay. To which I may respond, let's consider the alternative. Paul tells me, God tells me through Paul, to be absent from my body is to be present with the Lord. Wow. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Y'all, that is the hope we live with, isn't it? It doesn't matter how many Putins there are in the world. He cannot take away our destiny. As I sat there and I thought after I had my pity party, the Holy Spirit shows up and says, okay, you really need to think about this because for whatever reason you've agreed to do this. And I'm thinking about my life as a believer. I'm thinking about my church, God's church at First Baptist Columbiana. And I'm thinking about how I have been blessed. I started writing down names, y'all. I sat there for a long time. And man, I was thinking about people that had invited me. It's like... Tom was saying the invitation is very important. The response to the invitation is very important. And I started writing down people that invited me into ministries. Then, and, and Tom, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but I was 25 years old when I accepted Christ and two men showed up at my house and said, hey, we think you ought to be teaching. Y'all, that told me people at First Baptist Church Columbia at that time were hard up for teachers. <laughs> but God was in it. So my thoughts were, you know, this is surely must be of the Lord. Don't understand this yet. Even though I grew up in church, grew up in Roman Catholicism, here's Southern Baptist children in my house asking me to teach in the Southern Baptist Church. I said, God, <laughs> this don't sound right. But God was in it. So I started writing down names, and I'm not going to mention any names today because I wrote down so many names of so many invitations I've got of so many ministries here at First Baptist and even in other churches to go and to share and that I thought I can't start mentioning names because I'm going to leave out a thousand. So here's what I'll tell you. The people here in this church were doing something with all the support they gave me and, and, and prayers that they prayed for me and 
the invitations, the inviting me into ministries and, and being a part of classes. What I have seen when I look back reminds me of something that a, a guy named John Piper wrote in a book, and the title of it was 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die. And this came to my heart. I read that book. It's been some time ago. But I pulled the book down off the shelf and I said, this is, I just really feel like this is the message. He says one of the reasons that Jesus came to die is to create a band of crucified followers. Think about that. You see, all these people I encounter and continue to encounter in, in many of you in this room is the fact that there are so many crucified followers that are serving here. Jesus said, you want to follow me, count the cost. You see, I believe every believer in Christ meets Christ at the cross. And you'll say, well, certainly that's true. we got crucifixes hanging all over the place. That's not the cross I'm talking about. We know our salvation goes through the cross of Christ. But when you and I met Jesus, if we are a true follower, he meets us at our cross. Jesus said, you want to follow me? Then pick up your cross daily. To follow Jesus isn't easy. And I, as I reflect back on my 44 years, a month and a half, of being a believer here in this congregation and having been blessed by crucified followers of Christ. Y'all, it stands out in my heart and my mind more than it ever has. On this senior adult day, I want to encourage you, regardless of what age you think you are, because up until today I didn't think I was a senior adult, <laughs> regardless of whether you're still a child or youth or middle age or either side of that or, or senior adults. I want you to look around as you're leaving God's sanctuary today and I want you to look and you've seen Tom up here. Now he's our senior because Glenda is probably just a fuzz younger than me. So when she got up and gave her testimony, then it was confirmed to me sitting over there that I'm old, okay, I acknowledge that. But I want you to look around and I want you to look at us old people, us senior adults, and I want you to ask yourself this question, well, what are they still doing here? Man, hadn't they lived long enough? Don't they deserve to be out on the lake today or a golf course or whatever? And the answer to that is we're still following. You young people have been through a retreat this weekend, pursuit, right? Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said what? Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Keep on pursuing. You see, we old people, we're pursuing Jesus Christ. And I believe we'll do it right up to our last breath that he gives us. Because we've all been in here breathing a lot this morning and every breath you've had is based on the grace of God. You breathe in and you breathe out. It comes from him. You pursue. I believe like us senior adults are pursuing Jesus Christ because that is never to end in this life. And never buy into what the world tells you. The world tells you the church is outdated. 
The world tells you, you just need to live for you. God is giving many of you success today. It's already been pointed out, the baseball team, regardless of how blonde or brunette y'all are. He's giving you a platform, and he's expanding your territory through victory. Always understand that that victory is to be in the hell light, in the light of who he is. And you continue to pursue that, whether you're on the baseball field or the football field or whether you're with the band or wherever you are, you keep pursuing it. Because when you look around today and you see us old people, us senior adults, today I'm taking more pride in that than I ever have. <laughs> because, again, I'm old. But you know there's a reason why we're here you know there's a reason why we agree to stand up and give testimonies because everything I've shared here today comes back to one person. And that person is not any name in this world that I could have thrown out today. That's why I didn't throw out names. That name that I give you, that everything that I've experienced here is based on, that name is Jesus Christ, period. So I encourage you senior adults today to know that probably if nature takes its course, we're closer than anybody to being absent from the body and present with the Lord, and that is the greatest hope I live with. And for, the, you, for you young people, middle-aged people, you're not promised tomorrow. So my message and my prayer today is get right and stay right. And don't listen to the world. You listen to the Word of God. Truth is here. It is not out there. So I encourage you, and I hope I have encouraged you with those words. That's what's been on my heart. I thank my uh, Sunday school class this morning for praying over me. And uh, I'm never comfortable doing these things. But in closing, I want to tell you this. God ain't interested in my comfort in this world. He's interested in whether or not I'm following Him every day. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. God, I thank you for the senior adults you put in my life through the years and you continue to put in my life the and everybody else, God, you even speak to me and spoke to me this morning through a child in this church. God, your spirit is so powerful. God, you know my heart. And you know to experience the joy that Glenda was talking about. It's all based on loving you and letting you love others through us. It all comes back to love. God, I pray this morning, if anybody in here is just not sure where they stand with you. That God, today they'll make it right. Your word says, and I claim this promise, that anyone that confesses Jesus with their mouth as Lord, believes in their heart that you raised him from the dead. Wow. The greatest truths there are. Anyone that does that will be saved. God, I pray that if there's any doubt in any heart here today, that by the time they walk out of your sanctuary, it will be cleared up. Maybe from their seat, they just pray from their heart to get it right. They pray from their heart to recognize that you sent your son and he died for us he died for the church. He has instituted the church, Lord God. And we are so thankful for that. Help us to know that the church is here for our sanctification, for our preparation to go out into this lost, dark world. I pray this for each one of us, God, that we know it and that we're committed to it. And as the youth have studied this weekend, we'll keep asking and seeking and knocking Every day, Lord God, until you call us home and you send your son back.
God, I thank you for this church. And I thank you for the way you have spoken to us today. And you will continue to speak to us. Lord God, I pray this in the most powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We've heard the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's been a great senior day. The only thing that would make it greater is for someone to make a decision for Christ. And we're going to give you that opportunity this morning. Maybe one of you young people, God has spoken to you this weekend. And you want to confess Christ or you want to recommit your life to him. Maybe one of our seniors, maybe one of our young adults who's saying, hey, you know, the Lord spoke to me this morning and I need to make a decision for him. So we're going to stand and sing together. I'm going to be standing down front to receive you, to pray with you, whatever your need may be. As we stand and sing, you come as God speaks. Come now to worship our Lord through the giving of our tithes and offerings as our men come forward to receive our offering this morning. We want to remember Derek and Kristen Duval, who are serving the Lord out in Utah, along with all of our other missionaries serving uh, overseas as well this morning. And uh, Brother Chuck Fant's going to come and lead us in our offertory prayer. Where are you, Chuck? challenge that you have given each one of us that no matter what age we are you are never through with us we're never too young father to serve you and we're certainly never too old to sit back and let somebody else get the blessing of working for you so keep that in the forefront of our mind and father if we aren't actively serving father will you just convict us to find a place to do that Father, another thing you tell us is that we need to spread the gospel message. And that's what our service is about. So today, Father, as we give this offering, we just ask that you bless it. Father, that it may, uh, it may further your kingdom, that it may tell others about Jesus Christ and the wonderful gift that we have and the wonderful abundant life that we have every day because of that. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us that we are a peculiar people, aliens, the Bible says. Now, if you were to go up to somebody and say, you're strange, they might take offense at that. But you know, the Bible tells us that, that we're unusual and we need to act that way. And what the Bible means is that, is that we are existing in this world, but we aren't of this world. We're here every single day sharing the light of Jesus Christ, but our eyes are on the world that we are part of. And that's our heavenly home, the spiritual realm. That God is in working around us. We want to share one final piece for you. Talking about that very thing that, that we serve constantly right here. But our eyes are always on heaven. You listen to I feel like traveling on.
Haven't you enjoyed our, our senior combined choir this morning? Let's give them another hand. Thank you. Let me remind you, next Sunday is Mother's Day. It's also our baby dedication day, so come be a part of that special service uh, in our church. And then following Sunday, two weeks from today, is our children's musical God Squad. You don't want to miss that. That's going to be fantastic. And remember, May is our month for uh, collecting food for the Chevy Baptist Association. Be sure and pick you up a, a bag out here before you leave today. Fill that up and bring it back, okay? Let's stand for our closing prayer together. And as we pray... Brother Dwayne Weidman is going to come and lead us in our prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, dear God, that you have blessed us with these people to come and share their testimony. And we know that each Christian here has one, dear God, and we thank you for them. We thank you most of all, O oh God, this day for sacrificing and loving us so much that you did sacrifice your son for us to provide us a way to get to you. And for this, we're so very thankful. Among the other blessings you give us, we have a place like this to come and worship you from time to time, and we thank you for it. We thank you for our staff and what they have done with this church. We thank you for the members of this church that keep it up and keep it strong in your name. And all these things, dear God, we ask in your son's name. And we ask you to go with us now as we leave this place. Guide us and lead us. And may we, at the end of the day, may you say that you're proud of us for what we do. Thank you. Amen.